I'll tell you a story, a real true life story, a tale of the western frontier. The west, it was lawless, but one man was flawless, and his is the story you'll hear. To Kansas to settle in Kansas, he planned on a peaceable life. Some goods and some chattel, a few head of cattle, a home and a sweet loving wife. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. This is the beginning of the story of Wyatt Earp, the greatest of the old fighting peace officers, a real Western hero. So great was his character and so complete his skill at living with danger that he became a legend in his own lifetime. In the hard world of the Western frontier with all its bad men and outlaws, Wyatt Earp became the peacemaker. As a marshal, he went up against the worst of them and the stories they tell about him are doubly fabulous because they're true. This is Ellsworth, Kansas, 1873. Don't let the peacefulness deceive you. It was about as ornery a little town as you'd find outside of Dodge City. It was run by the Thompsons, a notorious gang of frontier gamblers and killers. Most of the decent people had pulled stake, and the ones who remained were afraid. When Wyatt Earp first rode into Ellsworth, he was fresh from hunting buffalo on the Great Plains. He was just a peaceful young man looking for a place to wash up. Not too much now. It's good, huh? that deals a game in Ellsworth cuts with the Thompson. Oh, boy. Why don't you do something, mister? You've got guns. Stop them. Do something. Not my fight. But you're welcome to use my guns. Don't say it. I know what you're thinking. I'm going to say it. What are you going to do about this, Whitney? Nothing. Real cowboys I can handle, but not this kind. I'm too old. That's why I sent for young Earp. Young, you say? Well, he ought to be 24, 25 by this time. A real trigger-happy gunfighter, huh? No, he's not a gunfighter. I've known him most of his life, and I've known his folks, too. I'm not even sure he'll take the job. But if he would, it'll make this a better town to live in. What makes you sure he can handle this crowd? He rode shotgun for Wells Fargo out in California. Never lost a dime or a passenger. And when it comes to pulling down a buffalo... I he... think we ought to leave things alone. I do business with these men. Good business. So do you. If I have to run a newspaper with their patronage, I'll close up. Well, I hope this herb comes soon, Whitney. Wyatt Earp. I'm looking for Sheriff Whitney. Ain't here. Hey, Mr. Earp! Well, if it isn't Mr. Masters. What's the matter? Don't you like the beds in the hotel? You joshing? The judge gave me 10 days or $50. And I didn't even have 50 cents after... After what? After I lost my money in a poker game. You just can't beat a crooked game, Mr. Earp. You got any objection to my paying Mr. Masterson's fine? Mr. Masterson? Why, that young rascal, he isn't I worth it. I said I'd like to pay his fine. It's your money, mister. Much obliged, Mr. Earp. Don't mention it, Mr. Masterson. Well, what are you doing in Ellsworth, Mr. Earp? 
Well, I'm not right sure. Mr. Whitney sent word he wanted to see me. It's Sheriff Whitney now. Yeah, that's what I hear. Who talked him into that? Mayor Miller and the church people across the tracks. Somebody had to take it. Mr. Whitney's a mite elderly for the job. From what I hear, this is a right bad town. <laughs> bad? If you stay around here, you'll see the primest gunfights outside of Abilene. Four men got killed last week, three the week before, in a poker game. Well, speaking of poker, uh, how much money did you lose? $150, or thereabouts. Professions? Sure, but I'm no crybaby, Mr. Earp. Man's got to learn sometime. Yeah, that's right. You, uh, you think that game might still be running? Guess so. Where? Uh, Shannon's bar. Come on. I thought you had to see Sheriff Whitney. Oh, that can wait. You know, I got a great respect for poker. Honest poker, that is. You might say I'm real fond of it. No, Mr. Earp. Cad Pierce and George Pashar run that game. They ride with the Thompsons. They're both mean and awful fast with their guns. You want your money back, don't you? How many, dealer? Give me two. Three. Two. The two on the right. Three queens. Well, that's enough for me. What's the matter? Do you want to stay to get even? Uh, some other time. <laughs> you stay out of this. Mind if I sit in? Table stakes, mister. It'll cost you a hundred. Any up, gentlemen. Hold it. You didn't deal me the top card. You sure you ought to say that, Sonny? I'll put it a little plainer. I think you deal a crooked game. Same goes for you. I'll try it. Now get out. Both of you. Go on, both of you. Boy, you sure drew a royal flush, Mr. Earp. It's all yours. All I want's my hundred and hundred and fifty they took from you. Losers in the game divide the rest. Help yourself, gents. Why'd you let him off? Why didn't you kill him? No point in that. Huh? Well, they stole your money and I got it back. You lost hundred and fifty? No, not quite that much. How much? Thirty-one dollars, all I had. The rest was bragging. Well, now, that took real courage to tell me that, Mr. Masterson. I'm proud you're my friend. Yeah, but you should have killed them. They'll tell Ben Thompson and his brother Bill that you draw fast, but you don't shoot. Well, when a man keeps on pulling his gun, you shoot. But if you get the drop on him and he quits, no. Did you get that from the Bible or McGuffey's reader? I believe it's mentioned in both. Uh, I'm going to check these at the hotel for me. You better keep them on, Mr. Earp. I'm not looking for trouble. Yes, sir. Wyatt, my boy. Mr. Whitney, I started right off to find you, but I kind of got sidetracked. <laughs> yes, I know. Gee, sit down and rest yourself a mite, will you? I got a lot to talk to you about. It won't take too much persuading to sell me some cattle. Cattle? No, that isn't what I had in my mind. Wyatt, I sent for you to take my job. What? You sure do make it awful tough, Mr. Whitney. I, I owe you for a lot of favors. I, I just don't see me wearing a star. Well, is that so outlandish? I knew your folks back in Illinois. A lot of lawyers in the Earp family. Your father was a judge. That's right. But the Earps have done their share for the law. Anyway, the, the law out here means trouble. You get enough of that without going looking for it. Well, if that's the way you really feel about it. Yes, sir, it is. Sure don't like to turn you down, but all I want to do now is buy myself a little cattle spread and sit back and watch the steers grow fat. <laughs> Sounds good. But let me ask you something. Why did you go up against two of the best gunslingers in the Thompson outfit? 
Because they cheated back? I don't think that was the real reason. No? What then? A sense of rightness. It was born in you. Some men have it, some don't. Well, look, Mr. Whitney, I'm sorry, but I just don't want the job. I can't say as I really blame you. One man hasn't much chance to civilize a hoodlum cow town. But if you won't do me the big favor, will you do me a little one? Yes, sir. Get out of Ellsworth real fast. After that gunplay you made... Uh-oh. Ben and Bill Thompson. the great Wyatt Earp, Whitney? Now, don't get nervous, Ben. He isn't wearing his guns. Better check yours at the hotel, too. Is this the fool kid you're trying to make, Sheriff? What are you trying to do, pull a joke on us, Whitney? Joke's on me, Bill. He won't take my job. Go ahead, take it, Sonny. Run us out of town with your bare hands. I'm not looking to cause any trouble for Mr. Whitney. I'll let him run me out of town. That satisfy you? Yeah. Uh, don't satisfy me. You don't make small of us with your jokes. You better cool off, Bill. You're drunk. Give me the gun. Sure, I'll give it to you. I've been wanting to give it to you for a long time, you meddling old fool. You drunk uh, fool. At least I got me a share. Come on, get out of town. I'll cover for you. Get him in the store. Wasn't partial to being a marshal, but fate went and dealt him his hand. While outlaws were looting and killing and shooting, he knew that he must take a stand. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, long may his story be Miller. We got this town tree. He says he's going out there and arrest Ben Thompson if he can find two guns that suit him. Miller, Mayor. Sheriff Whitney was my best friend. He was mine, too. Did you come here without guns? No, sir. I checked him at the hotel. The Sears arrested on most of these. I just heard about it. Why the back door, Mr. Crawford? Look, I need help, Mr. Mayor. You could have shot Bill Thompson from behind a fence. You let him get away. The thing to do is form a posse. Ben Thompson's the fastest hand with a cold and... Oh, let's see your gun. Give it to Mr. Earp. Now the dog's filed off. Well, I know I can just let the hammer go. I tend to shoot too quick. Maybe you ain't aiming to shoot at all. I guess I'll have to use these. I brought your guns, Mr. Earp. You hurt? Felt like I stopped a couple, but I guess I didn't. I'm okay. Needlessly reckless, Mr. Masterson. You could have come in by the alley like Marshal Crawford. One minute, Ben said, then he'll shoot up my store. If Earp fires just one shot, they'll burn the town. That might be a good thing. Here, you better wear this. I won't need it. I think Mr. Whitney would have liked you to. Hey, Miller! The great Wyatt Earp's got his guns now, so send him out here. Don't walk into that shotgun, Mr. Earp. Shoot quick. If he ain't out here in a minute, I'm coming in and get it. Did you hear that, Earp?
<laughs> he didn't run. It's fast, Ben. Get him now. Ain't you kind of foolhardy, son, letting Miller pin a star on you and send you out here? You guys stay out of this, all of you. You've come far enough, Earp. What do you expect me to do? Throw your shotgun on the road, put up your hands, and tell your friends to stay out of this play. Stop and let me talk to you. What are you going to do with me? Kill you or I'll take you to jail? The minute I give this gun up, someone will cut loose at me. If they do, I'll give you back your gun and we'll shoot it out with them. As long as you're my prisoner, the man who gets you has got to get me. You going after my brother? I don't waste my time. Now throw down your gun. I'll make you fight. All right, the rest of you men move back. Go on, move! Come on, Ben. We'll go over to the calibers. I think I could have gotten you. That isn't what you were thinking. No? No, you figured I might get you. If you had, my men would have shot you down. Yeah, but you'd be dead. Then who'd look after your brother, Bill? What are you, a mind reader? Nope. But I got brothers, too. I can understand how you'd try and save them from the rope if you could. Well, I'll be. I agree with the judge. Well, I don't agree with you, judge, and I won't. Go ahead, both of you. I'll handle this in my own way. Well, Ben, what's the charge this time? I guess we better let the new man speak his piece. He's the one that arrested me. All right, son. His brother Bill killed Sheriff Whitney. Ben helped him get away. That makes him accessory to the murder. Bill did this, not Ben. Why didn't you organize a posse and go after Bill? That'd be kind of stupid, sir. Oh, it would. Yes, sir. You just put Ben in jail where he belongs, and Bill's bound to come back and try to spring him. When he does, I'll arrest him, and you can hang him. Oh, now I ask you, Judge. Is that legal? No, it'll lower the dignity of this court. Your dignity? Mr. Earp arrested Thompson at the risk of his life. Order. I know how you feel, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Beebe, what do you say about this? Well, I think Ben ought to be fined for disturbing the peace. And that's all. Well, Ben, you agree to take your crowd out of town right away? Sure do. All right. $25 fine, $3 costs. Do I get my guns back, Judge? Yep. Uh, Sheriff, uh, what's your name? Return Mr. Thompson's guns to him. Court's adjourned. Well, I didn't know you were in cahoots with a judge. Don't put them on till you get out of town. Of course not. Promised a judge, didn't I? Come on, we're right. <laughs> Just a cheap hunk of tin. Mr. Whitney didn't die for much, did he? I know how you feel, but I sure wish you'd give us another chance. No, thanks. Mr. Earp? We're going to get a new judge at the next election and some good officers to help keep order. My job's hunting buffalo. I don't get quite $25 a head for him, but then again, I don't have to bury him. Good day, gentlemen. I'll learn you not to call Ben Thompson yellow. <sighs> Hello, Mr. Rook. Get 
up again and I'll hurt you. You're under arrest. Who is it? Marshal Crawford. I thought you were still hiding. Look, you won't be so brave when Judge Osborne gets through with you. And then this fellow Herb knocked Pete Logan unconscious with the barrel of a 45. That's a lie. He did it with his fist. Order. That means you keep your mouth shut. Well, Mr. Earp, who's stupid now? You are, sir. That's just what I wanted to hear. I fine you $50 for felonious assault. And I sentence you to 30 days in jail for contempt of this court. That's a law for you. Mr. Earp ran your friends out of town single-handed, and so you got Shut up! You get 15 days in jail. For what? Vagrancy. Lock him up. So they call this justice. He started bragging that Ben Thompson had left several gunslingers in town to take care of you. So I asked him why Ben didn't stay himself. Now, is that vagrancy, Mr. Earp? Nope. Well, just what is vagrancy? Well, if you're playing poker and you win, you're a sporting man. But if you lose, you're a vagrant. So you're in jail for being honest, and I'm here for being poor. Now, what kind of law is that? Just the Ellsworth brand. Oh, but it could have been a lot worse. How? Well, the, uh... They could have caught you drawn to an inside straight. Well, what is it now, Miller? I'm in a hurry. Just a little story I'm telegraphing to the Capitol. The governor might like it for his paper. I thought you might like to look it over. No law west of Newton. No God west of Dodge. Well, well that means Elspeth. Are you aiming to get me in trouble with the governor? I don't think you've got the nerve. Until today, I don't think I did have. Shyster judge. The law on Eldreth is a farce. That, that's libelous. No, that's blackmail. Well, what is it you want? Wyatt Earp and young Masterson. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Earp? Marshal Crawford and the judge sure left in an awful hurry by the back door. They were scared of you. Uh -uh. The judge and the Thompson brothers can't afford to have us run it over them. Logan told Bat here that there was somebody gunning for me. And here it comes. Get away from me. Both of you. Go on. You in a hurry to leave town, Mr. Earp? Nope. Ben says we've had enough of you. So does Judge Osborne. What do you think? Get out. I want you to drink up. Get Ben to teach you to shoot with both hands. Come on, Bat, help me pick him up. Yes, sir. I guess I better wear that star before the judge can throw me in jail for disturbing the peace. Crime is good fight I ever saw. Thompson caught his gun sight in the holster. Pierce heard his aim and got off a wild shot. But what happened to Pashar? Well, he was left-handed. Go on, man, take him to jail. Much as I hate losing good customers, Mr. Earp, it'll be a pleasure having you around. Can you imagine that? The odds were three to one against you, Mr. Earp. Well, let's forget about gunfighting odds, Mr. Masterson. But I've, uh, I've noticed that you give very little thought to the odds in poker. Now, do you realize that the odds against you are drawing a straight flush of 65,000 to one? And in drawing to one pair, the odds against you improving that hand are 360 to one. Well, it's a, it's a risky business, poker. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh. 